When we think of surgical EQ plugins, FabFilter Pro Q3 is the first one that comes to mind by far. I've been working with Pro Q3 since 2018, its release date, and it's still my primary EQ in the box. FabFilter developed an amazing and simple workflow. The dynamic EQ function is invaluable to control resonances further down. And ProQ3 has outstanding advanced functions, such as frequency analyzer with resonance highlight, as well as frequency masking analysis, which makes it unique and almost feels like cheating. But if a filter is that good, why may we need an alternative EQ? And this information is based on those years of my experience with FabFilter. So FabFilter doesn't really have a sound. It is clinical and sterile, and sometimes this is quite underwhelming. It forces us to stack up some console emulating coloring EQ such as SSL or Neve, and that may be a disadvantage. FabFilter workflow also sometimes leads to way too many cuts and notches which may challenge the phase relationship. And finally, ProQ3 may feel a little bit too visual without an ability to fully focus on sound without those visual distractions just by how our uh, listening psychology works. Therefore, let's take a good look at the new offering from Make Believe Audio, MBEQ, and compare the possibilities. Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Trubetskov, and I'm here to bring valuable information about metal production and recording. Like and subscribe to not miss out on it. Let's go. All right, so this is how the interface of MBEQ looks. As you can see, it is quite simple. And here are some features that I find really, really cool from the get-go. Firstly, MBEQ differs from FabFilter by implementing the source feature, which is on by default. This feature is an emulation, and a very detailed emulation, I believe, of a Pi console. You can drive this EQ with this slider here, and it automatically gain compensates the output, resulting in a heavy drive saturation from that console. And moreover, if you don't drive it, it still introduces the color to the bands that you boost or cut. The second cool feature that I really like is keyboard shortcutting on this EQ. It makes the workflow incredibly fast. Firstly, select a band with your mouse in order to reduce or increase the Q, hold Alt and move the mouse around. In order to get rid of your changes, hold Command, Option, Control and then the band disappears and vice versa as well. Hold control and you enter the frequency scanner mode for the band, which I find quite amazing and we'll get there too. And hold command and option and cycle through possible band types. MBEQ comes with seven bands by default with the possibility to add five more with up to 12 bands. I really like that there are some limitations in place here to start with because with FabFilter there are no limitations and you can introduce and that may lead to overthinking whereas here you are limited and this forces you to think more and focus on the music and I really appreciate that but how does this sound? let's just take a good look into it, right? I have a track here which is The Overcoming Project Determination my solo project with cool musicians, my Kelly Factory, John Howard Threat Signal, and you can get the multi track for free for yourself as well. Link in description. Let's just take a look at those guitars right now here. So as I disabled a few instances of Pro Q3 on guitar bus, these need a lot of work to sit in the mix. There are some resonances which 
just piss me off. Let's try EQing these guitars firstly with MB EQ and make them sit in the mix nicely. And then we'll get to a Pro Q3 and we'll try to make some similar moves and see how we go, right? So, MB EQ first, let's do it. Notice how I hold control and then see which frequency is amplified. about it see how simple it was and the primary way of working with mbq for me at least for now in my early days of it is finding the region that i hear problems with and then amplifying the frequency by control so this introduces a boost of 20 decibels in the context of the recording and then switching to the notch mode here and just pulling it down I find it really, really spectacular. And I think these guitars sit in the mix much better now without introducing too much, as you can see. This is all that was required, at least so far. Before. There's still something there. Let's compare this operation regime with Pro Q3. So see, the problem is Pro Q3 analyzer kind of distracts me straight away. It shows me that some frequencies are bouncing and in my mind I'm like, all right, I'm gonna pull them back. Like this one here. Is it a good idea? Well, it's hard to say. And I wanna instinctively make this dynamic as well. Here's the thing, I have unlimited amount of bands to introduce. MBEQ gives me 7 by default, and yes indeed, I can do more, up to 12, but just the way the bands are set up is limiting me, and I like limitations, because we as humans tend to overcomplicate things, and in audio overcomplications lead to phase issues, and they just lead to a burnout from the mix without a possibility to focus on details anymore. And now I'm not saying that the FAP filter is the enemy here. It may be me. It may be the way I've set up the analyzers. But 
it is what it is for now. And I'm just telling you my impressions after working with this for so long. So obviously I followed uh, the frequencies which I used in MBEQ somewhat similarly and it doesn't sound the same. I'm not sure why, but it just doesn't sound the same. Let's do a proper comparison. Fab filter first. MBEQ. Strangely, it works better with similar moves and with less of them. I'm not particularly sure how to explain it. That may be the case of the source. So let's uh, switch that off. The change is pretty significant, even though subtle. It kind of pulls everything together better. Another thing with Fab Filter Pro Q3 is that you don't use the notch function much because it bloody looks scary. <laughs> Fab Filter is giving some scary looks with this notch function because you cannot control the amount of notch you can only control the Q of it and I kinda instinctively do not want to remove the whole lot of a frequency from the spectrum as it just doesn't feel right even though it may sound okay but I'm not keen to do that whereas with MBEQ you can control the amount of notching you do and they created a perfect notch in a sense of Q, as you don't have to worry about that. You just select the notch, select the frequency, and compensate for it. That's all. I love it. I also love the automatic gain compensation. So there is that. Let's also take a look at the character of that console emulation. Sounds great, just a bit quiet. It's perfect tube-like, transistor-like distortion, which I have always adored. It is automatically gain compensated, which is just phenomenal. And yeah, it sounds great. It's easy to use. Let's use some other synths and see how that goes. The most exciting about this feature is you can control how much or how little you introduce of uh, that character and it stays on every band that you boost to cut in any context you just activate this south button here and that's all i'm actually really really surprised how little moves this equalizer required in order to make things sound right it's just 
it's results oriented it is not distracting me with anything and it sounds great now is mbeq the best eq no because there is no best eq the best eq is the eq that suits your needs what are our needs as mix engineers or producers with the surgical first phase of EQing. We need to get the results fast and we need to get them to where we need it to be. We need to cut the offending frequencies and we need to clean the tracks up. MBEQ helps with that. I like the following features of MBEQ so far. Hotkey workflow is fast. Interface is not distracting. Drive function and the Pi SOS is tremendously good sounding the notch function is awesome and the way you sweep for frequency is better than in fab filter because in fab filter you sweep for a frequency with the solo button and you only search for that frequency without the context of the mix whereas in mic believe you are forced to listen in the context of the track and i think that gives better results faster with all that said, I would recommend this EQ for anyone who is looking for a simpler EQ with great control and great character. Yes, it does not contain a dynamic EQ option, so you will need some other tools to fix for that. But I do like the limitations and I do like how this works. I hope this is helpful and let me know what your thoughts are on MBEQ. Until next time, take care and rock on.